Okay, hello. So this is my uh, commentary on the time lapse of making the frog. I find it's kind of better to... It works better if you commentate over time lapses rather than, like, writing about them because you can, like, comment on what's going on the screen. Um, so I also start by looking at some reference images and then I kind of sketch some designs. Um, I didn't really extensively sketch it out before. I kind of just felt like I wanted to sort of block them out in 3D and stuff first, like... Well, I don't know. I like. I didn't really intend for this this block out to to be the final thing. I was just like, I like. I'm gonna open Blender and just like put some shapes and kind of play around a bit. But it ended up being like, um, turning into the final thing, or uh, being the basis for the final thing, which is kind of good. I think that that happens quite a lot actually with like, you know, I think with digital things, just because you can kind of reuse them in so many contexts. Often you kind of just start playing around with something. And then um, that kind of bec you can reuse it and kind of refine it, and it kind of becomes the basis for like something bigger. So um, yeah, um, what is this? This is me putting on some Byzantine chants. I listen to I listen to loads of Byzantine chants for some reason. <laughs> I don't want to know why. I'm not religious, but um, yeah, during this during this I listen to loads and loads of Byzantine chants. Um, so this was sculpting. I like remashed all the shapes, like blend, blended them into one, and then you can go using this method, which is called sculpting, which is kind of the most like fluid. This is a bit like a method of three D modeling. It's a bit like clay. It's like digital clay, basically. Um, and the thing with this, obviously, you can see you get kind of, kind of quite, quite um, what's the word, non-analytical or like kind of quite fluid control of the thing, but obviously it has like it's really detailed. Like it has loads of unnecessary detail. It has loads of polygons. It's like really heavy, the model. So if you were to use that in a game, it just wouldn't be very good because it's just like that mesh. Even though it's smooth, it has loads and loads of like lots of topology really bad topology it doesn't it doesn't have detail in the right places so you shouldn't use that so you, the next stage is you have to like go over and kind of re-topologize and optimize um i'm trying to think of an analogy it's a bit like writing a six thousand word essay which is like mostly waffle and then you go and read it it's, it's like it's like summarizing yeah it's like summarizing a um an essay but with polygons you're like summarizing the the direction and the, the polygon and stuff and yeah i should probably start talking about uh, the topology when i actually start retopologizing which i should yeah here we go um i think i'm about to start doing yeah um so you need to make sure a few things you, you want most of the um sh the polygons to have four sides which are called quads um and you want to have you want to use triangles three sides tries we call them um in in some places but not all like you want to be resourceful with them and you want to have like as few n gons and n gon is like an n like a like a hexagon but n any number is, is like any with a just polygon with any more than four sides you don't want to have any of those um so you also want to make sure that where it needs to bend like where your um arms or where you would have creases in your skin in real life you want to have like lots of kind of densely packed rings of uh edges of polygons so it can deform properly when you rig it um one thing i found that made it kind of easier in, like compared to the last previous times when i've uh like topologized stuff like this is start like starting with separate islands of geometry in kind of places and then connecting them so for example you'd have you do the legs um, start with the leg, just wrapping like the quadricep or something in a, like a, in a tube and then you connect that to the body or you have like the calf and the, the upper leg quadricep and then you connect them together so you kind of start with the easy bits and then where, when they, where they connect, where they need crevices, you, um, you connect them. Um, one, I found the eyes quite challenging because um, they have to connect the sort of mouth and stuff and they have to be spherical i um i used a, a sphere primitive a uv sphere for the eye but i modified it a bit but it was kind of hard to get right um the arms weren't were they the, i don't know they weren't too hard you see here i can you can see i'm doing the thing of like i started with a separate piece for the forearm and the uh bicep bit i don't know what that was um, and then you connect them together so yeah um I don't know. I guess the, the the other method you could do would be just like extruding f down from the shoulder to the end of the arm, 
But I feel like that would just be... It's like if you're... That's like straight ahead animation or that's like trying to draw without a sketch sort of thing. It's kind of good to know where you're aiming and like, you, you know, you fill in the really difficult details later. Um, the fingers are pretty simple because these are frog, right? Frogs don't really have, like, they don't do much with their fingers, I don't think. Um, here's the... Here's the legs. You can see what I was talking about. Like, it starts with a band there. He's got, like, some kind of, uh, what's the word, stockings on. Um, <laughs> and then, you, yeah, the same with the calves, and you connect them. Um, the, the good thing about it, him not being a human as well is I think with humans, it's like, um, if there's something wrong, it's, like, really obvious. Like, because we're, we're really good at, at um, you know, we're so used to looking at people. It can just get uncanny so easily. Um, especially with like faces and like if, if a limb looks bent in the wrong way it kind of looks broken you know um, but if it's a frog we don't we, we know what frogs look like but I don't think we have as innate a uh, sense of when it looks off you know so um, yeah you kind of have a bit more leeway in that case in that area like um, I think it's fairly anatomically accurate because I had all the reference images you can see um, it's I guess their legs are kind of because their legs are sort of like ninety degrees turned away f um, from each other to the way ours are, but I guess that would make sense because they need them to swim. Like, um, and the 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 flippers here were really challenging just because there's kind of you can see there's kind of quite complex shapes and you have to make sure that they you know I don't know that the, 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 they can like kind of connect with the other parts of the thing and I don't know just like the 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 flipper geometry is really bad not geometry the flipper topology is really bad still and you can see that's the those are the rings these yeah the rings of um edges that go in pilot in places like the armpits and around the where the legs connect because they need to bend um yeah so I was just cleaning this up a little bit this was like yeah the the feet I think ultimately I am happy with them because the thing is they don't need to deform that much and um no, or not as much as the they need. They need to bend in the middle. Actually, I suppose in real life the feet do bend, do deform quite a lot because they would also um splay like as like um grip that was like they push the water away. I think they kind of expand a bit, um, and the webbing gets like stretched. But um, yeah, not in this case. I don't know the uh, the animation I made. I should I'll just I should talk about the animation when I've made the animation. Uh, so here here I'm rigging him. So this is just a. Uh, stock quadruped rig um, and obviously because it's a quadruped you, you know same but this is what is good about biology and stuff you can just like rearrange the body plan a little bit but they all have like four limbs and a spine and stuff so this actually was pretty easy to this is this again I was like okay I'm just gonna test rig him to see how it works to, you know see what just I, I like was you know excited to rig him so I just kind of played around with it but then it turned out to work well enough that I used it for the final thing so here I begin animating um, a root, now frogs, unlike humans, they move both their legs at the same time when they swim, which made it really easy because you can just turn on mirroring and then it'll, um, yeah, it'll, it'll just mirror. So it was like twice as, oh, half the time. Um, like if you were doing a walk cycle for a human, normally you'd do one leg passing, you know, and then you'd go and mirror it and paste it. So it takes kind of longer. And in the end I did do that just, um, and I, made sure that the limbs weren't always mirrored they were like they were i just went back and kind of added a bit of imperfection to them so they were a little bit off because it it like it just looked a bit unnatural when they were perfectly mirrored um which is called twinning i think when when in animation which is when you have both limbs doing the same thing it's apparently a thing is like something to avoid um yeah what am i doing here this is me just trying to i i yeah pasting the frames and like giving i'm putting some extremes in so like right before he when he has his legs in the most retracted position they go for like one frame of really of like exaggerated uh retractedness just to give it that kind of oomph, you know um and originally it was 24 fps the animation but i went and changed it to uh 60 in the end because the game's well hopefully it would run at 60 but you never know maybe i should go back and do 120 later i don't know if unity inter i don't know if unity interpolates the animations like because it produces keyframes right so it could easily um like smooth between them mm. so it doesn't have any texture at this point um i'm not sure when i'm going to start that i think i did the texturing before i did the no i did the texturing after i did the animation actually it's a bit mis it's a bit misleading in the i think in the 
video implies that I uh, did it in the other order, but I didn't. So um, now I had to go and mark some seams. Like basically, when you want to put a texture on something, it's like you have to kind of unwrap it. You have to UV unwrap the object, which is like peeling an orange. Or it's like if you had. Um, if the frog was wrapped in cling film and you had a scalpel and you had to kind of cut the cling film off in a way that you could smash it flat on a table and then paint on it and then put it back on, that's basically what you're doing. Um, so you have to go and mark which edges you want to be like where the cuts are made um, because if you don't, the computer will decide for you and it often does quite a bad job um, and you kind of get like breaks you'd, along the back. You'd have, you'd have along somewhere you'd have like a kind of uh, line where like the edge it's like um i i don't know i don't know what the metaphor is um something something about maps and the pacific ocean like if there was a big island in the pacific ocean that that looked split because someone painted it on a map i don't know this is a really bad metaphor um this texture this original paint i originally i not rich, I, I lost sadly because i didn't realize that unity doesn't not Unity. i didn't realize that blender by default doesn't uh pack the images into the Im like texture images you make into the file you have to save them separately which is a bit annoying you see see it says uh up at the top left it says paint view image and there's a little asterisk by image that is the fucking bane of my existence because that asterisk means unsaved there's an option which is um you can go file external data automatically pat into pack into dot blend file and then it'll do it but i hadn't done that which is really annoying but then i started again this is um, me having started again and i think ultimately it turned out better um you know just because i kind of had like a rehearsal for the texture so i don't know and i, I kind of i put a bit more effort into the patterns as well on his back like i tried to hide a face in there um yeah, I don't know, like, Blender's texture painting tools, they're okay, but they do have some weaknesses, or often it's hard to tell if it's, like, a problem with the software, or just you don't, you're not good at it, but I feel like it was really, I tried getting, like, a brush that wasn't just, like, a uh, soft texture, I tried to get one that actually had some texture to it, just by putting an image in, but it didn't work very well, like, so maybe I should have downloaded some. Um, to be honest, I, if I had been bothered to make an account on some site that had a download for some brushes, I could have tried them, but I didn't in the end, maybe I should have. Um, okay, so now I'm doing the eyes, um, same thing, like painting the textures, but these are, the eyes are emissive, so they suck, they glow, basically. So in the game, this is important, obviously, because it means you can always, even if it's really dark, you can still see the eyes. Like, they still, they basically are unaffected by light, which is kind of good. Because it means if it's dark, you can always see the player, or you can always see a bit of the player, the frog. Um, so here, I think I'm animating the idle animation. This was just, like, sort of, you know, same thing, like, flipping, t doing a pose, and then, like, mirroring it so it sort of blends between. And I made it go really slow to make it look idle. It was actually quite hard doing an idle animation. It was harder than I thought it would be. Um, yeah, and then coding some stuff. I was trying to make it so when you, you have like a bash attack, you can like zoom towards ob like objects. And I was trying to make it so it play a separate animation when he did that, but I couldn't get it to work. I, I'm sure I could have put more time into it, but ultimately it, like his just having the, the swim versus idle animations blend based on if there's input and how fast he's going. There's like a kind of graph of the ratios of those, I don't know. But that worked fine. So in the end, it was all good. I might go in at some point and really polish it, but like, that's the thing. Adding that animation, the, the bash animation is just like a matter of polish. Like most people wouldn't notice if it wasn't there. So I think it's fine. Um, yeah, this graph here is like the animation graph thing in Unity. And we're almost at the end here, so I should pretty wrap up. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty proud of the frog, though. I think it's pretty um, good. And I think it, I'm happy with how quickly I managed to make it as well. It took, like, I think it was about 24 hours total, like, total time of time lapse. Um, this is 14 minutes long, though. So, it's, yeah, 14 minutes at six, you know, I don't know.